Hi there, I'm Kath and in this video I'm going to be talking all about what I've been sewing in May and that includes a pretty blouse, a midi skirt, a tote bag and a couple of other projects so I'd love it if you'd stay tuned to hear all about them. I'm Kath, welcome to my channel Made by Kathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me today for my latest video. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what I've been making in May. And I've got a bit of a mix of projects to share this month. Um, I've got a blouse and a skirt, a tote bag, a quilting project, and also a knitting project, which I'll include at the end of the video. So yeah, a real mixed bag. And I'm really looking forward to sharing them all. But as usual, I'll start the video with what I'm wearing today. And I'm filming this video at the weekend and um, my husband has taken the children out to the park to meet a couple of friends this morning so it's the perfect time to film when it's nice and quiet here and I've got a few jobs to do around the house after I finish this video and then we're going out swimming this afternoon so I wanted to wear something that was fairly um, easy to wear easy to get on and off for swimming quite comfy and casual and I'm wearing a jersey dress and I made it using a pattern from this book here which is the make it simple book by Tilly and the Buttons it's a really nice book. I think I've made three patterns from him here so far and I really like them all. And the pattern I'm wearing today is the Tabitha t-shirt dress. So I'll show you the line drawings of it so you can see what it looks like. It's kind of a classic t-shirt shape on the bodice and the pattern pieces included in this book are for the t-shirt. And then you have to draft your own skirt pattern piece. They kind of include details of how to measure yourself and how to make it. It's quite simple. And it's got a little um, channel around the waist which you pull in with a drawstring cord and you can make it either short sleeved or long sleeved. So it's a really casual, simple, relaxed t-shirt dress and it comes together really nicely. In terms of sizing, um, it goes from a UK 6 to a UK 24 and the largest size is for a bust of 48 inches. And the version I'm wearing today, I made this cute um, jersey fabric. I can't remember where I got it from. I'll find out. If I can find out, I'll link it down below. But it's just a white jersey fabric with these um, black spots on that make me think of the 101 Dalmatian story. Um, it's really nice, just some um, classic cotton jersey, so nice and stretchy and perfect for a kind of um, easy wearing t-shirt dress. And I had a bit of fun with top stitching. I used black sort of zigzag stitches around the neckline and on the sleeves, um, yeah, just to kind of add a little bit of an extra feature to the dress. And I'll stand up a bit so you can see the drawstring waist bit. It's just really nice and comfy to wear and I've got it teamed today with a pair of black leggings on just to keep me a bit... Um, cosier because it's not really really warm today but I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. I think in terms of sizing for the top um, I made I think the UK size 8 um, which is my standard Tilly size. I'm just having a little look at the sizing here just to check that. Yeah that the size 8 is for bust 32 inches and waist 26 inches which is my measurements and then I think for the skirt piece I just measured my hips as they tell you to do to calculate the skirt piece and went with that and it came out absolutely fine but it's a nice, comfy, relaxed one to wear, perfect for a day where I'm going to be doing some jobs and you're getting changed for swimming and that sort of thing. Oh, and I thought I'd mention on this dress, in terms of the drawstring casing and adding the little holes for the cord to um, sort of thread through, the book does say that you can, you can use um, buttonholes or sew buttonholes using your machine um, to add a little hole for the cord to go through. But I really like to use my Prim Vario pliers and eyelets to make those holes. I think it gives a really nice finish. And it's something I often use when I'm making the True Bias Hudson pants as well. I'll stand up so you can see what the eyelets look like. Yeah, I think it gives a really nice finish. And a couple of people have asked me what size eyelets I use. And I use ones that have a five millimetre diameter in terms of the hole in the middle of the eyelet. But I'll link the Prim Vario pliers that I use and the eyelets down below in case you're interested in them. They're really easy to use. And yeah, I think they just give a really nice finish. So anyway, I'll move on now to sharing with you what I've been making in May. And the first item I've got to share with you is a blouse I made using a pattern from this magazine here, which is the Fibre Mood magazine issue number 16. And it's my first time buying a Fibre Mood magazine. And I've made two patterns now from this magazine and I've really enjoyed sewing them both. But the blouse I made this month is the pattern that really grabbed me when this magazine was released and really made me want to buy the magazine. And I'll show you the details of the blouse. It's called the Amin blouse. It's a really pretty one. So here is the blouse here. Um, I'll show you the line drawings up close. It's got a round neck and a button down front. And the really pretty feature, I think, is this sort of triangular yoke with gathering. 
It's also got a yoke on the back too. And the neckline's finished with bias tape, so it's got some nice sort of finishing in it too. It's a really pretty, fairly loose fitting blouse, you can see on the model pictures. It's designed to be fairly loose fitting. I think it's one of those blouses that would work really well in a drapey fabric. I think it's designed for lightweight woven fabrics. In terms of sizing, the Amin blouse goes from an extra small up to a 3XL, which takes you from a bust of 30 inches up to a bust of 57 and a half inches. So it's got a really good size range to it. And for my version, I used some really lovely viscose fabric that was gifted to me by Minerva in exchange for a blog post. And I'll share with you my fabric I used and my blouse. And here it is. As you can see, it's really lovely fabric. It's got a lovely drape and movement to it. It's got this really pretty ditzy floral print on these little white flowers with blue centres. And the base colour is this sort of reddy maroony colour. It's called Sangria. I think the fabric's also available in a navy and a black and a green, which all were really nice colourways too. And I was really tempted by all of the colourways, but I thought I'd go for red because I thought it would go really nicely with a pair of blue jeans. But yeah, so here is my blouse. And I'm really happy with how it turned out and it was a really enjoyable sew. As you can see, I had fun choosing little blue buttons to sort of match with the colour of the flowers. I bought them online and I wasn't sure if the colour would turn out right, so I was really happy when they turned up and they do go really nicely. And you can see um, the V shape here, the little front triangular yoke, which I think is a really pretty detail. And the back yoke here that goes across here with the gathering. Yeah, it's a really nice sort of relaxed fit blouse and I do like the round neck of it too. In terms of sizing, um, I went for the extra small size, which covers UK sizes six and eight. And my measurements were towards the larger end of that sort of size range. But when I had a look at the finished garment measurements for this one, it did show there was quite a lot of ease built into it. So I decided to go for that range rather than go up any larger. And I'm pleased I did. I think it's got a nice fit to it. I did make a couple of adjustments, but they were only to lengthen the sleeves and the main body of the blouse, both by one and a half inches, which is kind of a standard adjustment I often make to lengthen the body and the sleeves on garments. And I'm five foot six for reference. But I'll put a picture up so you can see how the blouse looks on. Um, I really like how it's turned out. And in terms of the fabric and the blog post, I'll link them down below. And the link will take you to a web page that has the fabric on in the different colorways. And if you scroll down, you'll be able to find my blog post underneath. I've got a couple of things to mention about fibre mood patterns. The first thing is if you buy the actual magazine rather than a PDF um, pattern, the patterns don't come with seam allowances built in. So you have to sort of trace off the patterns and add the seam allowances yourself, which is quite straightforward because it's quite clear in the magazine. It shows you where you need to add the seam allowances and how much you need to add. It does just add an extra step in the process. So if you're not keen on the tracing and adding seam allowances, I'd recommend you go for the PDF patterns, which I think do include the seam allowances already. The other thing I thought I'd mention, which is something that was brought to my attention that I hadn't realised initially, is that in the actual um, magazine itself, the instructions, the patterns are fairly limited and they're mainly picture based. But if you go on the Fibre Mood website, then you can access their more detailed instructions that are more wordy. And I found that really useful for the um, I mean blouse. I accessed those instructions and found them really good and much better than just using the book. So I definitely recommend having a look for those more detailed instructions online too. But yeah, the I mean blouse was a really fun one to sew. Um, I think the only thing I found a bit funny about it is the way the placket's added. I'm used to on other blouses um, that I've made, the other placket on before you um, hem the blouse. But for this one, you kind of hem the blouse and then you sort of cut you kind of sew the placket separately and attach it on. So you need to make sure they're exactly the same length. Otherwise, it would look a bit uneven at the bottom. And I think I probably prefer the method of adding the placket on first and then hemming the whole thing in one go. So I think if I made this blouse again, I'd probably change the order of construction slightly for that. And the only other thing I'd probably change if I made another version is the way you make the placket is you interface the whole placket piece and then you fold it over and sew it, which results in sort of double layer of interfacing on both pieces of the placket, which ends up being a little bit stiff if you're using quite a drapey fabric like I did here, this very kind of lightweight floaty viscose. It is okay, but I think if I made this blouse again, I'd probably just interface half of the placket piece so that when I fold it over, I don't get a double interfacing piece just to make it a little bit more fluid at the front. I think that would still give enough structure um, to hold the buttons and buttonholes in place okay, but we'll just make it a little bit less yeah, stiff at the front there. But yeah, it's a really lovely um, blouse pattern and it's a really comfy um, blouse to wear and I think it has some really pretty details on it. And I do really like the idea of making a plain version too. I think that would really showcase the um, lovely detail of this triangular yoke at the front because although you can see it um, with the gathering on this blouse, it's such a busy print. I think maybe a plain fabric could showcase it that little bit more.
but yeah this is my Amin blouse and I'm really pleased I did give it a go because when I saw this pattern come on Instagram I just loved it so it's always nice to be able to actually try a pattern that you see and really love <laughs> So the next make I've got to share with you for May is something new for me that I tried for the first time this month because I thought it'd be nice to try a different type of sewing skill and I decided to try and have a go at sewing my first ever bag and I've admired handmade bags on Instagram before and I've always thought it's something that I'd like to have a go of but I was a bit nervous particularly around inserting zips and that sort of thing but I thought it'd be really interesting to see how a bag is constructed and whether it is something I'd like to try more of really. So I had a look around and found the pattern I thought I'd give a go and it's this one here, it is the Pepin tote bag pattern by Noodlehead and I'd heard quite a few good things about Noodlehead before and I really enjoyed browsing their website actually, they've got a whole range of different bag patterns for sort of beginners and more experienced bag sewers and yeah just a whole range of different like backpacks, tote bags and that sort of thing. But I really like the idea of making a tote bag, I thought it would be quite a simple shape to start off with and the Pepin tote is designed for beginners. And I thought it'd be quite a practical bag too. I'm often sort of carting a bag around with a load of stuff for my children in. And I thought this looked like a nice roomy tote and I wanted to make a bag or definitely get some good use out of. So the Pepin tote is being des is described as a simple tote, perfect for beginners and experienced alike. It's a nice roomy tote bag. You can add this patch pocket on the front. Inside there are some internal pockets too. So a few different sort of elements to sort of try sewing. And then if you want, you can add a um, zip to the top of the bag. And I thought I'd decide I'd do that too because I like the idea of give it a go because I was a bit nervous about it and seeing whether it was tricky or not too bad. And I'd heard lots of good things about the Noodlehead instructions so I thought it'd be a good first bag to try. So yeah, um, I really enjoyed sewing it actually. It was really nice. It was quite different to dressmaking I think because there was a lot of, you kind of measure out your own pattern pieces and there's a lot of measuring um, all the way through. I guess it's all about precision to make sure everything comes together and looks really neat and square for a tote bag. But I'll show you my tote bag and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Pop the instructions down here. So here is my Pepin tote bag. Yeah, um, I really love it actually. Um, I made it in this really nice um, rifle paper coat canvas fabric. I was a bit nervous about choosing a rifle paper coat fabric because they are a bit pricey. So I was quite worried about messing this one up. So I took the whole bag making process very slowly and just yeah, took each step very slowly, read the instructions very carefully to make sure I didn't sew anything the wrong way up or anything like that. But this is a cotton canvas linen blend rifle paper co fabric that I got from Lamarzi Fabrics. I think it's still in stock, so I'll link it down below. It's got a navy base, and I do have a lot of navy clothes, so I thought it would go quite nicely with a lot of those. And then these really pretty flowers on with these sort of lighter blues and peach colours. I thought it was a really pretty pattern to it. Um, and as you can see, well, you, I don't know whether you can see, I've got the patch pocket on the front, which I tried to pattern match. And I'm quite pleased how that turned out. And there's a little popper here, so you can kind of pop open this pocket, um, which is quite nifty. Um, I really, yeah, really, it's really enjoyable sew actually. Um, one thing to mention is the pattern does say that you should not go for a directional or one way directional print and um, because the way it's designed is that you kind of cut this main piece out of one piece of fabric and it kind of just rolls round over the bottom and I didn't read that until after I bought my fabric but I just ended up adding a seam to the bottom as you can see here at the bottom and so it was absolutely fine to once I'd done that just cut with two pieces so the flowers do face the right way up on both sides of the bag. And then, like I said, I added a zip on the inside. Um, oh, it's undone at the moment, I'll open it up so you can see how that looks. And actually, it went in really easily, much better than I expected. The instructions were really clear, and I think as long as you follow the instructions really methodically, um, you can't go too wrong. Um, so yeah, it was really fun actually adding that zip in. It's a nice chunky metal zip, so I'm hoping that'll be nice and durable and last for quite a while. The one slightly fiddly thing I found, or probably the most fiddly thing about this bag is, at the end of the zip, I'll just pop out here, you can finish it off and it is optional you can finish the zip off with a little fabric tag at the end here and I found my sewing machine really struggled on sewing around that I think maybe if I did it again I might hand sew around that to get a better finish because it was quite a fiddle getting my sewing machine to really be able to hold on to the fabric and pull it through and then also going across quite a chunky metal zip but it didn't turn out too badly and it will kind of be in the bag most of the time so I don't think it's too much of an issue I'll try and put it back through but inside it's got these internal pockets here um, so yeah, a couple of extra features, somewhere nice to put your phone in maybe. And it's a really nice spacious bag and I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of it and really enjoy um, using it too. The handles, I chose um, canvas handles, you can go for leather straps but I thought I'd just go for canvas and give it quite a casual feel for like an everyday tote bag. But yeah, it was a real real fun to make. The instructions are really good, really held your hand through the whole process. And I definitely like to try my hand at making a bag again. I think I'm going to be browsing 
the noodle head website at some point in the future and trying to pick out another pattern maybe to up my skills and try something a bit different from a tote bag but i'm really happy with how it turned out and i'll link as well as the fabric i'll link the notions i use down below um I did originally buy some poppers here um, that were a different brand to Prim and I really struggled to put them on. I tried them on some scrap fabric and I had to use a hammer and I'm not great with a hammer and I found it really hard. So I ended up going out instead and buying some Prim ones that I could attach with my Prim pliers that I mentioned earlier in the video. So I'll link these um, down below, the ones I used, and I just find, I think going forward, I'm just going to only buy snaps and things that are compatible with the prim pliers, because just, I'm just not great with the hammer. But <laughs> anyway, this is my pep and tote bag. It was a lot of fun, and I definitely recommend that pattern if you're kind of looking to start having a good bag making. I want a fairly simple pattern that kind of will hold your hand for your first bag making experience. The next make I've got to share with you for May is another dressmaking project. And it's another pattern that I tried for the first time this month. This one is a free pattern, which is always pretty cool. And it's for a skirt, this skirt here, the Sabina skirt by the Little Pomegranate. It's a really pretty midi length skirt. I'll show you the line drawings, which have more of the details on them. So here are the line drawings for the Sabina skirt. It's an elasticated waist skirt with sort of gentle shaping around the hips. And it comes down to midi length with this little ruffle on the bottom, which I think is a really nice, pretty feature. Um, and it's also got these pockets built in. They're actually really roomy. And what I like about the pockets particularly is the way you sew them, they're sewn into the waistband as well as the side seams. They really hold their place and don't drag down. And I think that's really great, particularly if you're sewing the skirt in a more drapey fabric where the pockets can hang down and sort of distort the shape a little bit. They won't so much because they are sewn into the waistband. So it's a really nice pattern. Um, it's really easy to get it. You just need to go on the Little Pomegranates website and then you enter your email address to sign up for her newsletter. And then when you do that, you're automatically emailed the pattern files and pattern instructions. And what's nice about the pattern files is if you're printing at home, the PDF file has the layers function in. So you only need to print the size or sizes you need, which I always like. Saves on ink, saves on paper. Um, yeah, and saves on having lots of lines. You have to figure out the right ones. So yeah, it's quite nice and easy to get hold of. And it's a really nice, pretty skirt pattern. Um, and in terms of sizing, it's available in a UK size 6 up to a UK 34, which takes you from a waist of 25 inches up to a waist of 51 inches. So a really good size range too. And it's designed to be made in light to medium weight woven fabrics. And it's a pattern that's really drafted for beginners. It's got loads of detailed instructions throughout the pattern about the sewing terms that are mentioned and that sort of thing. So, for example, there's a little box explaining what interfacing is and how you use it and what stay stitching is and telling you what stitch lengths it recommends. So it's a really comprehensive pattern that really holds your hand through the process. Um, so I really enjoyed following actually, um, just because there was so much information there, it just felt like a really easy, relaxed sew. And for my version, I used a really pretty viscose fabric that I got from Minerva that was really reasonably priced too. I think it was 5 99 a metre. So yeah, really good value, this one. It's a really pretty, another ditzy floral print, a bit like my Amin blouse. But this one has a navy base and these white flowers, these little yellow centres, so sort of daisy flowers. And I thought a ditzy floral would be really nice for a skirt and would go with quite a lot of different sort of plain coloured t-shirts and jumpers in my wardrobe. So I could kind of get a lot of wear out of it. But as you can see, it's lovely and soft and drapey, the fabric. So I think it works really well for a midi skirt that ends up being a bit floaty. And you can see the little ruffle on the hem there. It's just a really cute little skirt. Um, and I'm not, have, historically, I haven't been a big wearer of midi length dresses and skirts, but I've sort of recently been getting into them a bit more and I'm actually really enjoying that length. So I haven't got many midi skirts, so it's really nice to have one to add to my wardrobe. You can see a pocket here. I think I must be showing you in the back. Here's the pocket. So as you can see, it's a decent size to it <laughs> in there too. And the skirt came together really nicely. It's quite a simple sew. One thing I did do is um, I made, I think, the size eight based on my measurements. And I lengthened the skirt by three inches because um, the lady who um, designed the skirt, Romana, models it on the front here. And she says um, in somewhere on the website that she's five foot two. And I quite like the length on her. And I'm five foot six, so I thought if to achieve that length for me, I might need to lengthen the skirt a little bit. So I added on three inches to the length of the main piece of the skirt. But when I tried it on, on me, and with those extra three inches added on, it was practically a maxi skirt. It came down longer than I expected. So I ended up chopping off those three inches and then actually chopping off a further inch and a half to get it to a length I like. And I'm now really happy with the length. And I'll put up a picture so you can see what it looks like now at that length, which is one and a half inches shorter than the original pattern pieces. But yeah, I'm really pleased actually, I've worn it out. It's really comfy to wear with elasticated waist. Um, I think I'm gonna really enjoy styling it in different ways. 
one the only thing that I find a little bit um annoying about it I guess is um with the elastic channel at the top the pattern advised you to sort of um, stitch down the side seams um, to hold the elastic in place but I do find it still flips about a little bit within the channeling so I'm sort of tempted maybe to run a couple of lines of sort of wide stitches across just to hold the elastic in place a bit more and um, rather than leave it to move around in there I think I'll maybe wear it a bit more and see whether I want to add that on just to sort of secure it in place a little bit more than just by the side seams but other than that, I'm really happy with it and I definitely like to make another Sabina skirt. Um, yeah, I think it's a really pretty style and I love the little ruffle on the hem. Oh, and I'll link the fabric that I used to make my Sabina skirt down below. It's a really pretty viscose fabric. It's lovely and soft and drapey. I think it's also available in a sand colourway and a red colourway too. It is slightly translucent in the sun, but I quite like that for a sort of summery swishy skirt um, and I'm just glad that to have found some fabric that I really liked that was really reasonably priced too because I didn't want to spend too much on the fabric for my first go of the Sabina skirt just because like I mentioned before the whole midi trend thing is a little bit new to me and I wasn't sure if I would like the skirt at that length on me and I didn't want to risk spending too much on the fabric and then end up chopping it off to sort of a mini length skirt instead and wasting a load of expensive fabric. So I'm really pleased I managed to find some fabric that I liked that was quite reasonably priced that I could give this skirt a try with. And actually I'm really happy with how the skirt came out. I actually like it more than I expected to and I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of it. So I would definitely like to make another Sabina skirt at some point in the future too. <laughs> So my final sewing project that I've got to share with you for me is another slightly different one. Another new skill I tried this month. Like I mentioned, May's been a bit of a mixed bag in terms of what I've been trying and I've really enjoyed trying a couple of new things. And this month I had my first go at quilting and I attended my first ever sewing class and it was an instruction to quilting class. It was a two day class that was run at a sewing studio that's local to me. I'm really lucky to have it quite local and it's called Sewers Faction. And you may already know them. They run lots of different sewing classes and they also sell some fabrics online. I will link um, their website down below in case you fancy checking it out. But a friend of mine had done a couple of classes at Sewers Faction before and really enjoyed them. And she quite fancied this quilting class and said to me, would I like to join her? And I thought that'd be a lot of fun and a good opportunity to learn a bit about quilting and see whether it's something I might like to do a bit more of. And so it's a two day class to make a mini quilt, which you could either use as kind of a um, sort of display on your table or use the sewing machine cover. And I decided to make my quilt as a little sort of mini blanket for my daughter to use in her imaginary play because she loves playing with her um, dolls and teddies and things. And I thought she might be able to use it somewhere with that. And I had such a lovely time on the course. Um, I can definitely see how you can catch the quilting bug. I know a couple of people messaged me and said, be careful, it's really easy to catch the quilting bug. And I can totally see how that is. I found quilting really, really satisfying, really methodical and mindful and enjoyable and creative too, in terms of choosing colours to go together. Yeah, I really enjoyed the whole thing. I definitely like to do more of it. But I'll show you my quilt that I created on this two day course. Here it is. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. So I chose fat quarters for the middle and um, based on my daughter's taste, which is basically pink and unicorns and that sort of thing. So I got this really pretty mix of fat quarters with little pink hearts and unicorns in whites and pinks. And I got those from Higgs and Higgs. I'll link them down below. And then I went to a local, um, a local haberdashery shop and chose the quilting cottons for the border and the binding um because i wanted to kind of go for like a hot pink color to kind of pop against the sort of pastel pinks in the middle so i had a lot of fun choosing the colors to go with it and i just really enjoyed the whole process um i really enjoyed learning how to do these lines straight and sort of quilting on top of the fabric um oh i'll show you the back too the back we made using leftovers from the fat quarters that we used the front so it's quite a thrifty way to make the quilt and you can see the top stitching there I chose a hot pink top stitching thread it's hard to tell with the light but yeah I chose a hot pink top stitching instead add some contrast colour I'm really pleased how that turned out too and it was just a lot of fun and I really enjoyed putting the binding on too um I found the binding quite different to dressmaking binding where you use bias binding sort of, sort of bends around curves for the binding on this quilt we just used sort of um class standard non-bias binding so it was really quite satisfying because it didn't bend at all or stretch at all. So it sort of stayed in its shape, held its shape really well. And I did quite like that sort of structured feel that quilting has. And I really enjoyed hand stitching the binding on the back. I finished that at home after the end of the course. And it was such a nice way to spend an evening just hand stitching it all in place. So yeah, it was really enjoyable. Um, the course was run by a lady called Jo and she has her own quilting business. She runs online quilting classes and she's called the Crafty Nomad Fleet. 
and I'll link her Instagram page down below in case you fancy checking her out. She was really knowledgeable and I feel like having taken that quilting course, I feel like I'm equipped with kind of the knowledge to kind of know the basics that if I try a quilt at home myself, I'll know where to start and I hopefully won't go too wrong. Fingers crossed because I definitely would like to try some more. But yeah, I'm really happy with how my quilt turned out. And actually, um, I just had to go and grab this quilt. It was being used as a little mat for my daughter's ponies. Um, so I'm glad it's kind of being played with straight away. And I've actually just this week bought myself a few quilting supplies so that I can hopefully do a bit more quilting in the future. I bought myself a quilting ruler, which I've actually wanted for quite a while because I think it will work really well for making adjustments to dressmaking patterns too. So one of those big sort of six by 24 inch quilting rulers I bought. I've also bought some curved safety pins because they worked really well for when you're attaching the different layers of the quilt together um, because they sort of curve so that the actual quilt can stay flat, which I think is quite clever. And I also bought myself a Hera marker, which used kind of score lines on the quilts, then you can sort of um, stitch on top of them. And I found that worked really well when I tried it in the class. So I'm looking forward to those um, yeah, quilting tools arriving and giving them more of a go. But yeah, I really enjoyed my first quilt. So hopefully I'll be sharing with you a bit more of my quilting progress at some point in the future. Although I am back to dressmaking for now, my latest project that I'm working on at the moment is dressmaking. So there'll definitely be quite a lot more of that too. So those are all of my May sewing makes. But like I mentioned at the start of the video, I've also got one knitting project to share with you that I finished in May too. And it's a bit of a fun one. It's one I made from this book here, which is the Knitted Cats and Dogs book by Sue Stratford. And if you've watched some of my older videos, you'll know I've been working my way through this book and making some of the cats and dogs um, as chosen by my children. And the latest one that I finished this month is one for my son. And it's this pup here called Stripes. So it's quite a cute, stripy, friendly looking dog. And he is knitted in cotton aran yarn. And I do like cotton yarn for toys. I do find it's a little bit more durable than an acrylic yarn. It goes less bobbly and fluffy. So it's quite a nice yarn to knit with too. And the version I made my son, he chose the colours for. So they're not the same as the colours of the dog in the book. Here is the version I made for my son. Here is his stripes. Um, so as you can see, he chose like the green colour as the main colour and the blue as a complementary colour. And I think it looks really cute how the kind of green pops on the little paws and the little feet. He's got a little tail at the back, which is quite cute. And these sweet little ears and quite a friendly looking face. And he was a lot of fun to knit up. Um, it was quite a simple construction, this pup. He was quite simple and quick to knit. The one thing I did discover when knitting this one is um, how to properly do the make one stitch in knitting because I often will just do a knit um, front and back or knit forward and back um, to add a stitch into a line. But I looked up on YouTube how to actually do it properly because when I did the knit front and back stitch um, for stripes it was making the stripes a little bit jaggedy at the end just because of how the yarns pulled about by that stitch. So I'd use the actual proper make one stitch, um, which I found out how to do on YouTube, and actually surprisingly simple, and it gave a much better effect for the stripes. So I do find, as working my way through this book, I always learn something new from the patterns. They're all quite different, quite varied. Um, so yeah, and they're quite fun little projects because they're quite small, um, so they're quite satisfying too. So I was quite pleased to learn about the make one stitch, and I'll definitely be using that in the future, especially when it comes to um, knitting with striped um, striped items. But yeah. He was a lot of fun to make. I think he's quite a cute one. Hopefully he'll be happy joining the other um, knitted dogs and cats in my son's bedroom where they're all displayed. So that was my final make for May. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing all about what I've been up to this month on the sewing and knitting front. As you can see, I've tried quite a variety of different projects this month, which has been a lot of fun. And I've learned a couple of new skills that I'm really looking forward to trying more of in the future too. And if you've enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, then please do consider subscribing. And then if you press the bell icon as well, you'll then be notified when my future videos come out. So thank you so much for watching and hearing me talk about what I've been up to in May. I've really enjoyed sharing all of my projects and I'll hopefully see you for another video soon. So thank you again. Bye.